concept of organization. We all know that an organization is a tool used by people to coordinate their actions to obtain something they desire or value. In this lesson, we will discuss organization, describe the value creation in organization, explain the organization theory, and describe the earlier approaches to organization. After going through this presentation, you should be able to explain organization and value creation, organization theory, approaches to measure organizational effectiveness, earlier approaches to organization, and fundamental elements of organization. An organization, therefore, is a response to and a means of satisfying some human need. Value creation is the primary aim of any business entity. According to Stephen P. Robbins, organization is a consciously coordinated social entity with a relatively identifiable boundary that functions on a relatively continuous basis to achieve a common goal or set of goals. An organization creates value through a different stage process. Each of these stages is affected by the environment in which an organization operates. Stage 1 is the organization's inputs. Inputs include human resources, information and knowledge, raw materials and capital. Stage 2. Organization's conversion process. The way the organization uses its human skills and abilities, machinery and computers to transform the inputs into outputs determine how much value is created at the conversion stage. Third is organization's outputs. Output of finished goods and services is released into the environment where they are purchased by customers to satisfy their needs. Then, organization's environment. Sale of output allows organization to obtain new supplies of inputs. Value creation is a product or service that provides value to the customer which sets your company apart from the competition. In the event that you can bundle other products or services that your competition can't, you have created more value and this may be a benefit to the consumer if they want it. Value creation is increasingly being recognized as a better management goal than strict financial measures of performance, many of which tend to place cost-cutting that produces short-term results ahead of investments that enhance long-term competitiveness and growth. Organization theory is the study of how organization function and how they affect and are affected by the environment in which they operate. Organization theory has two aims. First is understand how organization operates so that we can control and change organization to help them create wealth and resources. And second is to understand conceptual tools to influence organizational situations in which you will find yourself so that you could diagnose problems and make adjustments that help the organization to achieve its goals. Organizational effectiveness is the concept of how effective an organization is in achieving the outcomes the organization intends to produce. The term organizational effectiveness is often used interchangeably with organization development. Organization development is done through better management of organization structure, design and people. Organization structure may be defined as the established pattern of relationships among the components of the organization. Organization structure in this sense refers to the network of relationships among individuals and positions in an organization. Organizational design refers to the process of coordinating the structural elements of organizations in the most appropriate manner. The proponents of contemporary design emphasize on the environmental factors in which the organizations are operating. Organizational effectiveness the study of organizational structure is necessary to understand organizational effectiveness. In simple terms, better the structure of an organization, more effective would be the organization. Organizational goals represent the reason for an organization's existence and the outcomes it seeks to achieve. 
Organizational effectiveness is the degree to which an organization realizes its goals. Effectiveness is a broad concept. It takes into consideration a range of variables at both the organizational and departmental levels. Effectiveness evaluates the extent to which multiple goals are attained. To evaluate effectiveness, managers usually take one of the three approaches. They are external resource approach, internal systems approach and technical approach. The external resource or the system resource approach allows managers to evaluate how effectively an organization manages and controls its external environment. It assumes organization must be successful in obtaining resource inputs and in maintaining the organizational system to be effective. The system resource approach is valuable when other indicators of performance are difficult to obtain. Internal systems approach under this approach effectiveness is measured as internal organization health and efficiency. An effective organization has a smooth well-oiled internal process. Employees are happy and satisfied. Departments cooperate with one another to ensure high productivity. The internal systems approach allows managers to evaluate how effectively an organization functions and operates. Technical approach. Technical effectiveness is measured in terms of productivity and efficiency. Productivity measures are objective measures of the effectiveness of an organization production operation. The old theories of organizations are classified as classical theories of organization. First is Taylor's scientific management. The concept of scientific management implies the application of science to management. The aim of scientific management was to increase efficiency from specialized physical work through pre-described activities and close supervision. The one best way to execute such basic managerial functions as selection, promotion, compensation, training and production had to be discovered applied and checked on a continuous basis. It is based on four basic principles. First, each task must be scientifically designed so that it can replace the old rule of the thumb methods. Second is workers must be scientifically selected and trained so that they can be more productive on their jobs. Third is bring the scientifically designed jobs and workers together so that there will be a match between them. Fourth is there must be a division of labor and cooperation between management and workers. Next is Weber's bureaucratic theory. The word bureaucracy implies an organization characterized by rules, procedures, impersonal relations and elaborate and fairly rigid hierarchy of authority, responsibility relationships. According to Weber, Bureaucracy is a particular type of administrative structure developed to rational legal authority. Weber has provided a number of features of bureaucratic structure. These are hierarchy, division of work, rules, regulations and procedures, records, impersonal relationships and administrative class. Weber made a distinction between authority and power. According to Weber, Power induces obedience through force or the threat of force, which induces individuals to adhere to regulations. In contrast, legitimate authority entails that individuals acquiesces that authority is exercised upon them by their superiors. Weber goes on to identify three types of legitimate authority. Weber's bureaucracy is based on logic and rationality which are supported by trained and qualified specialists. The element of a bureaucracy offers a stable and hierarchical model for an organization. Fayol's administrative theory at the operational level. Fayol asserted that managers should apply 14 principles. According to him, these principles can be applied in all types, functions, levels and sizes of organizations. This had earned him the title of Universalist. These are Division of Work, Authority and Responsibility, Discipline, Unity of Command, 
unity of direction, subordination of individual interest to the common good, remuneration of personnel, order, centralization, scalar chain, equity, stability of tenure, initiative, esprit de corps. Fayol's contribution to management is unique and valuable. He provided a conceptual framework for analyzing the management process. Lack of empirical evidence, neglect of human factor, false assumptions, pro-management bias, historical significance are the limitation of Fayol's theory. Fayol put the primary emphasis of management on the rules and procedures that define the hierarchy of an organization. An organization is the planned coordination of the activities of a number of people for the achievement of some common explicitly purpose or goal through division of labor and function and through a hierarchy of authority and responsibility. The fundamental elements of an organization are mission, objectives, process, output, outcome, feedback, boundary and environment. Mission is the purpose or reason for the organization's existence. It tells what the company is providing to society. The objectives increase the efficiency of the workers. Process includes the transformation of inputs into the desired output. Output is the goods and services produced by transforming the inputs in order to meet the objectives of the organization. Outcome is the final impact that the output has in fulfilling the objectives of the organization. The organization has to obtain feedback to determine how its strategies have fared in achieving its objectives and goals for purpose of remedial or corrective actions if necessary. Each organization has a boundary which differentiates it from others and determines the internal and external environments. The environment of an organization includes both the internal and external environments. If you have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly, understanding organizational goals and strategies is the first step towards understanding organizational objectives. Right or wrong? Wrong. A contingency approach can be used to describe the activities of most kinds of organization. Right or wrong? Right. The value creation model believes that managerial actions can be adjusted to demands of specific situation or circumstances. Right or wrong? Right. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. An organization is a tool used by people to coordinate their actions to obtain something they desire or value. Organization is prominent social institution of our times. A value creation model can be used to describe the activities of most kinds of organizations. Organizational theory is the study of how organization function and how they affect and are affected by the environment in which they operate. Organizational theory is a way of thinking about organizations. An organization is created and designed to achieve some end which is determined by the top management team. Understanding organizational goals and strategies is the first step towards understanding organizational effectiveness. Organizational effectiveness is the degree to which an organization realizes its goals.